Welcome to the pre-celebration. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fruitful Sunday to you. We're so glad you're here. Why? Because today is your day. You are already loved. You are already chosen. That's what Faith City Music shared with us last week. So listen, on behalf of our pastor, Apostle Mike Freeman, and our First Lady, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, we delight in your presence. I'm Teresa Proctor, the Director of Training with the TQM, that's the Total Quality Management Division here at Spirit of Faith, and it's the month of fellowship. Okay, I'm not going to sing, but it's the month of fellowship here. And so let's tap into your brilliance as you all are coming in, and you're coming in so strong, right? As you're coming in, let's tap into your brilliance. If I were to ask you, if I were to ask you, what are some ways that I can strengthen my fellowship? What would you share with me? Come on, help a sister out. Type it into the chat. What are some ways that you would share with me, Teresa, this is how you can strengthen your fellowship. I'm waiting to see your responses, right? So I know those of you that are on YouTube and Facebook, you've already shared, you've already greeted, you're commenting because as soon as you see Mike Freeman Ministries go live or SOFCC TV go live, you are pressing that button and tuning in. So listen, Mark your calendars. Mark your calendars. This is, a, this is gonna be exciting. Mark your calendars for Friday, June the 4th. We're having Marriage Made Easy with Drs. Mike and Dee Dee Freeman. We have special guests. And the special guests will be Pastor John Jenkins and his beautiful wife, First Lady Trina Jenkins. It is going to be dynamic. I know you can't wait. So mark your calendars to be there. And listen, while we're talking about marriage made easy, were you, did you attend the uh, TQM? We hosted a training that was entitled Sparking Creativity and Innovation, where we talk about marriage and, and business and family. It was dynamic. Our guest speakers, they put it down. Elder Bud, Minister Tia, Minister Shamia, Pastor Rob. But this is what I want to share with you that was so profound. During that training, we had one of the participants to ask a question. Listen at this. The question that this participant asked, he said this, if I'm an introvert, how do I break out of the box as it relates to creativity and innovation? How do I break out the box? Let me tell you, the speaker responded to him and said, listen, first of all, you have to get rid of the title. Oh, I know. I wanted to throw the phone. He said, you have to get rid of the title. There are some titles that you've placed on yourself that you should not take ownership of. Come on, right? Anything that doesn't align with the word of God as it relates to your life, anything that stands as opposition to who you are called to be, don't take ownership of, right? And our ministry, let me tell you, we're gonna be returning to the building very soon. Are you ready? We're coming back to the building, right? And we understand that this is the month of fellowship. So as it relates to fellowship, it starts with us really capturing the proper vision of who we are, right? Grabbing a healthy self image of who you are in this world. Who did God make you to be, right? And listen at this, when vision is properly engaged, it serves as the ignition switch and the power source to high performance. You're called to do more, be more, and have more. I'm talking to you, and I see you all are coming in. I see you all coming in. That's right. Don't take ownership of it, right? And listen, as we're coming back to the building, this is what we have to do. We have to understand that our attendance is designed to minister to others, right? Jesus called us to make disciples, not make disciples in isolation, 
No, Matthew 28, 19 shares with us, no, we are to make Jesus famous, right? And Pastor Mike shared this. He said, when Jesus went to Calvary, there were some things that was paid for, but guess what? Fellowship is what, we made, what we're made for. No man is an island, right? Our ministry is, continues to make impactful, impactful demonstrations in the world from no lack nation to healing, deliverance, you name it. Oh my word. And so listen, we're gonna watch this video and I'll be right back because I have some powerful questions that I wanna share with you that I'm gonna have you to jot down. It's gonna totally, totally revolutionize your life. I'll be right back. strength of a nation the strength of every nation the strength of a nation the strength of every nation the strength of a nation the strength of a nation is determined by the male population is determined by its male population it is determined by the strength of its male population and is determined by its male population is determined by the strength of its male population is determined by the strength of its male population is determined by the strength of its male population. Hi, I'm Alvin Bates, and this is my beautiful wife, Jennifer, and we're the directors of the Usher's Ministry. And we're looking for a few good men. Apostle Mike tells us that the strength of a nation is built on the strength of its male population. So if you're ready to serve and you're ready to partner with the Usher's Ministry, please email us at the address below, and we would love for you to be on our team. The strength of a nation is determined by the strength of his male population. Oh, that was so exciting. Come on, strength. Thank you so much, ushers. Yes, yes, yes. And listen, today is a very special day. There's going to be the baby dedication of our baby Cresswell Bowman. Yes, pastors Tim and Breland Bowman, we're dedicating babies. I like to call him Sir Cresswell. Sir Cresswell, Cresswell will be dedicated today, so stay tuned for that. And then immediately after service, for 30 minutes, our prayer lines will be open. So if you have a prayer request or you just would like an intercessor to stand in agreement with you, simply dial 301-843-843. 9733. We are certainly here for you. So let, I got a question. Last Sunday, that, that faith confession, making that, that faith confession was powerful. How, how pastor really broke it down last week. Did you receive the word that he released though? Let, let me just reiterate it for you. He said, there is something up on this understanding, right? Something has hit this house and we have to thank God for the harvest. Man, he said a tsunami is coming to overtake you. Are you ready? Listen, we believe the words. We believe the words of our prophet. I know you do. I know you do. Yes, absolutely. That's right. It was powerful, powerful. And during the nightcap, he shared with us, he spoke on evaluations. So here's what I want to do, right? He said, he spoke about evaluations. And so let's have a moment of introspection, just a moment of introspection. So grab your pen and pad. I want you to jot down some questions. We're going to do a self inquiry, right? Powerful questions. Here's what they do. They unlock value, fuel learning, improves performance, and even fortifies fellowship. Okay, so I have six questions that I want you to ask yourself, and you can do this after every lesson. Just sit and ask yourself, how am I here? Where am I there? You know, the 15th of the month, we do our assessments with our family and even with ourselves, uh, for those of us that are uh, enjoying the life of singleness. But you can do this after every time you hear from our man of God, right? So here's the six questions, right? And listen at this, bankable people they assess themselves constantly. Okay, I knew I would get your attention. I knew I would get your attention, so here it is. Number one, listen at this, jot it down. Do I observe the win at the opportunity to sow? Do I observe the win at the opportunity to sow? Why is that so significant? Because Ecclesiastes 11 and four shares with us this. He who watches the win, waiting for all conditions to be perfect, mm, will not sow seed. And he who looks at the clouds will not reap harvest. Come on, we don't look at circumstances when it comes an opportunity to sow. No, remember life doesn't do us, we do life. Number two, 
exploring the five functioning components of faith, okay, which area will be my focus for the next 30 days? You remember the five functioning components of faith, right? Hearing, believing, receiving, speaking, and acting. Okay, so which one of those areas do I need to marshal my energies? Do I need to focus on and improve upon? Jot that down. Number three, are you tracking with me? Are you tracking? I'm telling you, this right here will totally transform your performance in life. Number three, what seeds do I need to remember? Oh, this was so good. Apostle said this, there are some seeds that you have forgotten about. Come on, there's some seeds that you've forgotten about. He stirred us up. He said, don't let it go. And even more importantly, listen at this, your heart is the birthplace where your increase is established. I, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I know you're going to want to go back and watch the replay. I already know. So number four, listen, do I focus on what I see? Do I focus on what I see? This is significant because if you keep your focus on what you can see, your thinking will be wrong, totally off, right? No, that's not what we're interested in. But however, pastor said, we have to get baptized in the word of God and be kingdom minded. He said, he shared this word month is coming up soon. Word month is where we're going to totally focus on the word. That means no Netflix, no chill, maybe chill if you're married, but no, no Netflix, no special, none of your favorite TV shows or movies. We're totally focused on the word. Now my squad and I, we said we're going to have word month in June. And then when apostle release our corporate word month, we're going to do it again. I'm, I'm telling you, your squad matters, right? And then Number five, listen at this, and we have one more to go. Have I inquired of the Lord about the assignment of my relationships? Have you inquired of the Lord about your assignment, the purpose that's connected to your relationships? Iron sharpens iron, not plastic, right? So we need to do this because Amos 3 and 3, how can two walk together except they agree? That's significant. And lastly, number six, now this is going to be a tough one, so take Take a little drink of water, but listen at this. Number six, do I reduce the element of fellowship to my feelings? I'll just let that sink in. Do I reduce the element of fellowship to my feelings? Don't reduce the element of fellowship to your feelings. Ephesians 4 and 3, we have to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So what does that mean? Here's what it is. Don't be so quick to dismiss someone based upon your feelings. Come on, take no offense, jealousy, envy, strife. Don't take offense. And listen at this, you have to challenge your assumptions. Listen to me, challenge your assumptions. What does that mean? Oh, I thought they meant, oh, I thought she meant. No, challenge your assumptions because assumptions and offense are the termites to fellowship. No, thank you. We're not interested in that, right? We're looking for the God-ordained fellowship. And one of the greatest acts, listen, one of the greatest acts of agape in honor is God-ordained fellowship. Is God-ordained fellowship. So did you all catch that? All right, I see it. Amen. Hand, hands emojis. I love it. So those are the six those are the six questions that you really want to ask yourself. Assess yourself. Be honest. Get, get, get to the truth quickly, right? And I promise you, as a result, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Come on, right? I see it. I see it. I see it. And then, hold on now. What about... Bible study with Pastor Dwayne. It's ladies night. That's right. We had pastors, uh, Deborah, Ava. Oh my word. They put it down. It was so enriching. It was so good. Pastor Mike just came on just to commend them on the word that they was bringing forth. And listen at this. I, I have to share this with you as we wrap up. One thing that Pastor Dwayne said, he said, fellowship is a mutual sharing in life to reveal this man named Jesus. Come on, it's all about making Jesus famous one by one, right? And so listen, I am so excited about our time together today. I want you to really get up on your feet, get engaged in worship because now we are turning this over to Faith City Music.
Let's go. Well, happy Sunday from Brandywine, Maryland. We might as well start this Pentecost Sunday all right. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad. For this is the day that the Lord has made. My chair and Carmen, let's go. You're not a limited source. Yeah. Yeah. But you are the well that won't run dry. You don't discriminate or yeah. only give us what we need. You go over. Yeah. Come on, put those hands together like this. Here we go. You're not a limited source. Come on, talk to him. Say, but you are the well. Discriminate or yeah. only give us what we need. Let's go! Let's go! I need to see your praising from your house, from your car, wherever you are. Say, if I give you my cup, if I give you my cup, yeah, I know, I know that it will. So we'll gladly take a drink.
you say go, we'll go. If you say stop, we'll stop. Somebody to use your heavenly language right there. Somebody open up your mouth and begin to speak your heavenly language. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, Holy Ghost. I can get back in the Bible days. lift your hands and receive it right there I dare you to lift your hands and receive it right there receive it everything that God is going to do he's already done it and he sent a comforter he sent a comforter to walk with us and lead and guide us in the persons of Holy Spirit you don't have Holy Spirit I encourage you not to leave this service and our time together without experiencing for I believe that you receive from the well that will never one dry it's all sufficient it's all knowing oh comforter have your way you lift your hands all over this world we don't worship him from a place of desperation we worship him from a place of revelation father we know who you are
know you to be That's who I know you to be Yes you are Wow, 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 Faith City Music. Let me tell you something, they make you feel like you can sing. Your love is amazing. Your, okay, I'm not gonna do it. Oh, but it was powerful. I know you were uh, dancing around in your home. <laughs> they said, please don't. <laughs> I know you were, I know you were in Eden. Oh my word, straight fire. I'm gonna get some singing lessons from Eden, yes. So I have some anointed announcements as Minister Lisa would say. If your birthday or your anniversary is today, this month, place it into the chat. Happy birth, we have a birthday here. Happy birthday, woo, woo, woo. Anniversary to you, we rejoice over that. First timers, first timers, yes, Leroy. First timers, if this is your first time that you are, we always have first timers, right? If this is your first time, type a, a number one into the chat so we can just love up on you and welcome you to this dynamic experience. I know you already feel welcome, but we wanna love up on you some more. And listen, Thank everyone for joining. Man, May was, is Mental Health Awareness. And let me tell you, each and every week, we had some incredible teaching from doctors, experts all over the world. And thank you all so much for everyone that tuned in and participated, and even more so, applied those strategies, those insights that they share with us. Scholarship weekend is next Sunday, May the 30th is scholarship weekend, woo, woo, woo. So prepare to sow a seed to invest in the lives of our youth, our next generation. It's their time, right? And SOFCC 2021 scholarship applications is available online. So go to spiritoffaith.org and click on events and see scholarship committee, you're gonna see the flyer. And if you have any questions at all, any questions at all, need more information, just simply email scholarship at sofcc.org, all right? And listen, we're gonna have a recap from Dr. Coleman, our mental health awareness session. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Healthcare quality is when everyone has the opportunity to be as healthy as possible. Healthcare disparity, which we're seeing in this country, is when your health depends on the color of your skin or the neighborhood where you live. Major depression is never normal. Sadness is normal, but major depression is never normal. You have a lot of people that walk around and they will say, oh, I'm depressed. No, you're sad. Major depression is never normal. Sadness is short-lived. It doesn't affect, really affect your daily activity. So when I'm sad, I still can go to work. I may have to push myself, but I can go to work, I can go to school, I'm okay in relationships, um, and I can deal with it. Now, what are some of the symptoms you have with major depression? You feel depressed. You feel like a weight is on your shoulder. Your sleep is up or down. Your appetite is up or down. Your energy is down. Your concentration can be down. You can have thoughts of worthlessness, helplessness, hopelessness, and thoughts of suicide. Those are the major symptoms of major depression, and we talked about sadness. While you're in the middle of the battle, say, Father, thank you for pushing back the forces of darkness. Your attitude during these times of suffering will determine whether you come out with greater or whether you stay where you are. 1 Peter 5.10 says, after you had suffered a little, the God of all grace will himself restore, confirm, and strengthen you.
dynamic Dr. Coleman. Thank you so much. And listen, I love how he applied that word. We don't need to self-diagnose ourselves, right? We need to go and see the experts like Dr. Coleman. That was outstanding. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then listen, share your next date night. It's time for date night. All singles, all married couples are welcome to Marriage Made Easy on Friday, June the 4th with Drs. Mike and Dee Dee. It's going to be amazing. So you want to be there. And then SOFBI graduation. Come on, we're celebrating our graduates. The virtual ceremony will be held on Saturday, June the 12th at 10 a.m. Oh, come on, come on, make certain you come and celebrate our graduates for prioritizing the Word of God. And please keep the following partners in your prayers. Curtis Williams, his father transitioned. And listen, if you have a loved one that has transitioned, please email Pastor Rick Wooten at rick.wooten at sofcc.org. Okay, please do that. And remember, stay locked in, stay tuned in. Each and every Sunday, we have uh, services and then we have nightcap and then Wednesday, noonday Bible study, 7 p.m., don't miss a moment, okay? Awesome, so those were our anointed announcements and now we're gonna turn it over to some special music. Yo, the king is here. Uh, yeah. Hey. All hail the king. Let's Yo, I'm sitting like this. Yeah.
Hey everyone, what's going on? We are the Woods family, AKA Woods Party of Four, and we are shooting this video just kind of um, to talk about how life has been uh, through the pandemic uh, with the messages from Apostle Mike. I think one of the biggest things for us is it really took place before the pandemic even started because he always spoke and had messages on maximizing the moment. And I know that the pandemic was a tough time for many people, but one of the things that we uh, wanted to do is to focus on what could we learn from the pandemic. It was a time where I think for so many people like us, we were spending so much time with our family, almost 24 hours a day. And really to look back at it and to say, you know, we may never have this time again. It was just one of those things where I wanted to make sure what could we learn from this moment? And it gave us a glimpse of if we continue to work personally towards our goals, how life could actually, you know, look for us. What are some of the things that you were able to take from the pandemic? Um, I think for uh, us in general, we we're able to be in the moment uh, more. Before we were in what seems like a rat race where, you know, days turns into night, night turns into days and we really were busy, but we really didn't have time to cherish the moments. But now we do. Um, we can see them grow up. We can see all their little activities and just see their day to day, um, their struggles, the school and things that, you know, they overcome and just the things as they grow up. We've really enjoyed the messages from Apostle Mike, but he's always taught us to be prepared for certain times. His messages have always been kind of forthcoming and, and have prepared us. So during this time, we just, like we said, we've been able to maximize these moments and through it all just remain faith strong. Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. I, 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 I'm just enamored by or with the um, testimonials or the uh, engagement of our partners who are doing so well. Uh, Didi says it's all about fellowship, and and it is. And to not be able to share with you all in the capacity that we would normally share in, uh, germane to our physical interactions, to hear how your families are doing, uh, this has been a tremendous substitute. Um, there are more than what I'm used to of people in here today. And we, we, are, we are steadily shrinkling back in. I don't even think, and so, so Troy and, uh, what's Troy's wife's name? I know her real well. Um, Kelly. Yeah, Kelly, yeah, Kelly, I know Kelly. Kelly, that's my girl, we go way back. Way back before the pandemic. Way back in typical. <laughs> <laughs> and and those beautiful children of hers, uh, Logan and and little little Troy. Clark. Yeah, Clark. I know Clark. Uh -huh. I know I know that whole family. <laughs> and uh, wow. And and they so adore their pastor. What did I just say? They so adore their pastor. I don't think your mic is on, is it? They so adore, well, I can hear myself, but I couldn't hear you. They so adore their pastor. It's a wonderful thing when children of this ministry, you know, not only do they adore me, they, they really just love me. And then the, the best part about it, they think I'm fly. Oh, see, haters will hate. Let, let's talk about that. <laughs> the praise and worship team just started, uh, they were just singing about needing a drink. I, I'm gonna tell Didi. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Didi, you need a drink. D listen, uh, but what were they wearing just moments ago? Can somebody help me with that? Uh, a kilt, and and Tim had on a dress. I'm just, I, I don't. Okay, can somebody help me with what? What uh, did, was it? International Day today? Did I? It's Irish. Well, it was Irish Day. I know, but what were we international or something? What? We're always international. Okay, so we just decided we decided we were gonna go a special presentation, and then they had the guy with the uh, airbag. 
Okay, okay. First of all, we're going to get these tones. Bagpipes. Yeah, this is, this is due, all due to a lack of fellowship. Uh, but we're going to get back together. <laughs> Big shout out to Dr. Coleman and the entire yes. MHA team. Everyone, you guys did an amazing job. Thank yes. you so much. Yeah, I, I just thought, wow, everyone. Uh, and I didn't have an opportunity to see him on yesterday. I, the entire, did you see it? Um, I, I'm, I'm always engaged in working. The beautiful part about it, guys, is that I can go back tonight if I want and be accountable avail myself to the information that I did not receive. And so it is vitally important that you do the same. Hey, as the pastor goes, so goes the people. Uh, what else am I supposed to say? Happy birthday to Lisa Freeman. Awesome, amazing. She's, she's now reached the ripe age of 39, guys. Wonderful. Looking, looking as gorgeous as the day that Dwayne met her, you know, and it's it's in part due to me that, you know, she is his wife. Cause we had options, you know, Pastor Dwayne and, and I. You ain't had no options. Y'all are haters, man. Y'all, ooh, y'all, and and God just so fit that when the votes were counted, Didi came up and Lisa came up. I mean, what winners are they today? Because we are because winners. I, I mean, absolutely. You didn't have, that's why you didn't have any options. Okay, praise the Lord. So moving right along, what, what else am I supposed to? Brittany and Kevin are celebrating an anniversary today. Did you know no. that? You didn't know your daughter? <laughs> I didn't know it today. <laughs> How many years? 12, 12 years. years. You know, I know I'm Mike, but may I be frank? <laughs> not only did she not know, Snow just texted me to remind me I had no clue that you all were married today. Oh, I am so honored and thrilled and humbled that you know, my beautiful daughters have made awesome selections. Well, one truly has, uh, and the, the, the jury is still out on the other. And I'm not gonna mention the one that the jury is still out on, so they have to fight about that. I love to start that kind of stuff with them. Um, what else am I supposed to have? My son, of course. Now, why would you have? To? She's up here. Your son made a beautiful selection. I'm talking about my daughter. I know, right now. but I have another daughter that's standing over there, and I want her to know she's a beautiful selection. That's that's deficit right there. That's that you just conveyed deficit. That's that's needed. She knows she's. We confirm that every single time I see it. I do have one alt against her though. She doesn't come see her father enough. We're going to discuss that. It may ultimately affect her um, outcome at the wheel presentation. So she will want to get that straight before I go to be with the Lord. Amen. Well, it's time to give, guys. Let's get ready to give. Come on, give me something over there, Gabe. Give me some. Let's re let's hit, hit that over. Well, it's time to give, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. praise the Lord. Uh, man, I live to give, and I give to live. There's something so magnificent about the order of God that my mind cannot always concede. Okay, Pastor Tim and Faith City Music, uh, that, that, uh, that voice of uh, Mookie and Eden this morning was just super califragilistic espialidocious. But they were singing too much. Your excess love, O oh Lord. Now, 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 sometimes that needs 
some clarity with respect to um, understanding it because that's just who he is. He doesn't know anything else. And some people say that's, 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 that's just too much. No, in the mind of God, because of his nature, he always wants to pour out upon us mm, much more than enough. And to us in our finite understanding, it would appear as though it's, it's, it's too much. Well, he doesn't know anything else. Even germane to his pouring out upon us monetarily speaking. It's, it's, it's just too much. Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come so that you may have life. He didn't say so that you may have church. And unfortunately, a lot of people are having church opposed to being the church. He said, I have come so that you may have life and have it how, Didi? More abundantly. He doesn't want you to just have life. And he certainly does not want life to have you. Because there are a lot of people that life has just swallowed up. And speaking specifically and directly about the mental health awareness, Dr. Dr. Coleman said that there are people who are depressed and sad because life has consumed you. One cat, and don't let me forget my point about it too much. One cat approached me, he said, how's life treating you? And this righteous indignation rose up in me and I said, let me tell you something. Life doesn't have the authority to treat me anyway. I treat life the way I want to treat it. No, you, you're going to have to start taking this posture and this position relative to who and whose you are in the kingdom. I don't know if you remember, but I told you, you are this earth's answer. Come on, y'all near somebody that's close to you, push them. Say, you are this earth's answer. Stop acting like you are this earth's problem or this earth can present to you a problem. Okay? And he kind of, he kind of, he kind of, he kind of, he kind of was repelled, but then I embraced him. I, I have this uh, very, uh, unusual way of communicating at times. I like, I like the shock effect to just get, get your attention and then allow you to know how much I love you. Like, like on, on yesterday, uh, I got stop, stopped, delayed, pushed back at the uh, dealership. I had to take my car into service and I pulled up there. They told me I would be in and out. I end up spending like um, two and a half, three hours there. Well, what are you going to do for two and a, two and a half, three hours uh, in the place where you did not expect? I, I ministered to the young guns out of the car dealership. And while I was there, there were two gentlemen that I had the opportunity, well, actually three, I led those two to Jesus in that time. Make good use. If I'm here, I approach every moment like it owes me something. Why am I stuck here for two hours? Just to be stuck here for two hours? No, emphatically no. God is up to something. So I got to be in tune to what the Spirit of God has me stopped here. Two and a half hours of your day is precious time. I can get money back. I can get a whole lot of things back, but I can't get time back. And so the Bible commands us to work while it's day, for when night cometh. See, when you have opportunity, go to work. Okay, so I went to work, I ministered to those guys, and the first thing I, I was, uh, actually, actually, uh, I think Reggie, were you filming when I was yeah. leading? Yeah. Oh, you got that footage? How do you know, he sent it to you? Don't be filming me and then send me stuff to my wife. See that right there, that piece right there, you filming me without my knowledge 
and then going to send stuff to my wife. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, y'all right. got to think beyond leading uh -huh. people to the Lord. I know. That's right. Okay, that's, all right. Okay, forget Reg it. Reg can go with you anytime he wants to. But, that, but see, if your life is clean, you got nothing to worry about. You okay, come on here now. All right, all right. And even at Cress Wells' party on yesterday, there were two guys who were delayed. I'm waiting for them to send me the money so I can pay these guys. Bam, why don't you receive Jesus Christ as Lord? One of the white cats, I'm just drawing the distinction because sometimes when you're engaging in different ethnicities or persuasions, people aren't as comfortable as they should be relative to that. There's no shame in my game. I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. We're called to be disciples throughout the world, go into all the general, all the nations, nations, ethnos, people groups, and compel them to come. Take time to lead people to Jesus. That's the only reason why Jesus hadn't come yet. And by the way, happy Pentecost. Yeah, we celebrate Pentecost 50 days after the death, burial, and resurrection. It's when the birth of the church started. Well, relative to Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, boom. I got so much to talk about and very little time to do it. Okay. Okay. Led those two guys to the Lord. Share with them. Engage. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. And then I ran into two partners. Okay, Crestwell Pilots, those guys got saved. I'm back at the car dealership. Take them back. Take you back where? Okay, you back at the car dealership. Okay. No one's following me here? Not with that transition, because you were still at the house, and then you went back to the party. You ain't telling okay, well, you Okay, well, you got, you got to roll with your boy. Okay. You got to jump around with me. We with me. you now. We with you. Okay, okay. So I'm back at the car dealership. I'm ministering to another gentleman. And when I tell you, it's been very rare that I've had this occasion. And one of the partners was standing there with me. I think Reggie was there as well. And I'm ministering to them. And I broke the ice. I jumped in there talking about how Jesus Christ happened to be the Lord of my life. And da-da-da-da, I'm a Christian. Here's this. Because he was a philosopher and a psychologist. So he just, he just, when I tell you, I had zero witness to minister salvation to him. It was almost shuddering to think. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was borderline scary, scary, because I'm standing here and this is what I do. And it was almost like, don't cast these pearls to the swine. See, when you get become so acquainted with the Spirit of God, Maybe it wasn't the time. Maybe it was too much. I don't know. We do this, Dee and I do this all the time. We know how to lead people to Jesus within seconds. We've had contests in different nations. I guarantee you I'm going to outwin people to Jesus than you. And we're going at it. It's like, it's like I, I, we want to see him saved, but we want to win too. <laughs> But we all win. Great point. Okay, they put up on the screen. Offering, Pastor. Okay, all right. I heard this statement. And typically, I have agreed to the statement. But the Spirit of God yanked my attention to the statement that I had to change what I've always thought. The statement is this, everyone is not a giver. And automatically I would agree to that. Spirit of God say, is, is that true? And I say, oh, I'm about to learn something here. He said, why do you agree with that? I said, because everybody's not a giver. And he said, what do some people give? I said, nothing. He said, there you go. Oh, man, y'all just missed that. They give nothing. Oh, Lord. But they're givers, and they don't understand that what they're giving 
is nothing and what they are getting is nothing. So in the grand scheme of things, you're already a giver. Like fellowship, we're in fellowship. You may fellowship, but it may not necessarily be in the kingdom as it relates to the things of God, but you're still fellowship. You may not be saved, but you still have a father. All of these things, because there are no demilitarized zones. There are no demilitarized zones. In other words, there's no in-betweens. Either you are or you aren't, but you're giving something. The law says to the one who gives something, it shall be given back to them. And your something is nothing. And what are you giving back to? What's coming back to you is nothing. So if you want to change that, you're going to have to start adding something behind that giving other than nothing. Now, here's the dilemma. Huh? Here's the dilemma. Here's the dilemma. Oh, that, that, that uh, word interrupted me. Here's the d dilemma. There are some who won't give what they have because it doesn't seem as though it matches what they want to give. But even if it's 50 cents, even if it's one dollar, it's an element of pride that will keep you from giving that one dollar because you may assume it reflects where you are in life. And it's not where you are in life. It's where you are in your understanding of life. Because that little lad who gave Jesus that two-piece fish dinner at that big meeting didn't think that that was a big deal when it came to feeding 5,000 plus people. But in the hands of Jesus and with the order and understanding of how the kingdom works, then God can take your little. But you have to move from the element of pride. You got to move from the element. I've had people who refuse or did not want to give to me directly because it did not match what was in their hearts. Well, Jesus is not concerned about your amount. He's more concerned about your position and attitude of heart when it comes to this area. So I want to encourage all of you who would think it irrelevant and immaterial to give one dollar. I can't cash at one dollar. Why not? So where you are, because when that woman who attended that meeting gave that two mites and Jesus stopped that meeting and got the intention of the entire crowd and said that woman gave more than everybody in this meeting. I think it was specifically designed for us to have some understanding that if you look at the win, Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, you will never sow. You can't consider the seed. Let the seed do what it's been designed to do. And so that's why when we talk about he's too much, he can take your little mm, and turn it in too much more than enough. So let's give at this time. Set yourself, everybody across this globe, set yourself to give. Let's make our faith confession over our finances at this time. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that I'm anointed to prosper. My eyes are open to see creative ways to increase financially. My ears are open to hear the best deals and my heart is pure so that you can channel finances through me. I am on the path of perpetual increase as I enter into my wealthy place. Wealth and riches are in my house. I declare that I'm the righteousness of God. I've sown my seed for supernatural abundance and I live in a daily expectation of increase. Money comes to me. My nature attracts money. The fear of lack has been broken and has no power over me. I hear my father's voice and the voice of intimidation and limitation I choose to follow. Woo! I am free from debt. I am the lender and not the borrower. 
The wealth of the wicked is being transferred to me and I commit to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. I'm ready to distribute and my life is a distribution channel for God's work in the earth. I thank you, Father, that daily you are loading me with benefits. I'm anointed to prosper. I am on your mind because it increase me more, more. And more. Abundance, uh, is your uh, will abundance is your will for me because it pleases you when I prosper. prosper. I call increase, abundance, abundance, and prosperity, prosperity. It to doesn't come say and prosperity. I know, but I say. It's supposed to be saying uh -huh. prosperity. It's supposed to be that. Okay. To and come to me now in, in Jesus' name. name. I will never be broke another day in my life. Woo, shout glory to God, somebody. And, and grammatically, we need to cha change that on the faith, because you're right, you said, and prosperity. Oh man, I can't tell you how giving has revolutionized our lives. And so as the pastor goes, so goes the people. You do not want to be, so go the people. You do not want to be one of the givers who give nothing, all right? Uh, very, uh, amazing and auspicious occasion, auspicious occasion, occasion that we have the privilege of sharing in at this particular time. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but I didn't look this far or see this far when you and I were married. You know, you, you're, just, you're just in the moment and you're not uh, expanding it as such and understanding all of the different elements and nuances of it. But uh, today, uh, wow, our awesome son and beautiful daughter are presenting their second born and dedicating and consecrating him unto the Lord, Cresswell, Aaron, Bowman. So, so uh, Pastor Tim's family is here as well. I mean, they're our family as well. His awesome dad, Tim Sr., his awesome and amazing mom, Wanda Bowman, they are here along with our family. Uh, we've all been shot up, and I'm going to tell you some things about that in a moment. So yeah, while they're setting up, I want uh, you all to do what we do. Wow, look at all these awesome things. I thank God that uh, this ministry honors and esteems and respect my family. It's nothing more valuable and important and essential to me than my family. No, really, when it comes to all of the things that are important and relevant and significant in my life, there's nothing. It's, it's, it's matchless. I mean, even this ministry, this ministry doesn't come before my household, my family. <clears throat> if my family needs something and this ministry needs something, you gotta already know. And even in the new partner's orientation, I'm always telling them, if you don't like Dee Dee, you can't like this ministry. You know, I love Pastor, but his wife, oh, I love her, and I just think he's so arrogant. Okay, this ministry is really not for them, right? Because we go well together. What's that? Uh, 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 life and marriage, life and marriage goes, what is it? Love and marriage. Love and marriage. Yeah, well, you know, at least I had the tune. You knew what I was saying. Go together like horse and the carriage. That's how we roll. Yeah, whatever. These are the days. Am I supposed to turn it over? Yes. Let me turn it over now to uh, Dan's wife. <laughs> What's her name? 
My name is Allison. Allison, you know I haven't seen people, and you know when you see them, like, okay, okay, what are they? It's been like over a year. Or so. Dan's wife is okay. That is who Dan's I am. Dan's wife. That's who you are. That's who I am. All right. <laughs> Happy Sunday, great day, Apostle Mike and Dr. Didi, as well as to our Spirit of Faith family. And to all of you guys that are visiting today via streaming, we welcome you to this momentous occasion. I'll read the scripture. It says, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. On today, the Bowman family is presenting their son, Creswell Aaron Bowman. Woo! Woo woo! We will ask at this time, will the parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and godparents of Creswell Aaron Bowman please come forward at this time? Yeah, and mom and dad can get over on this side. So we can highlight them, yeah. And kind of cat a corner, I guess. Josh, you guys can stand here behind me. Brittany, where, where is your family? In the bed. In the bed. Okay, praise the Lord. Hey, mama. Apostle, we present Creswell to you on this morning for dedication. Wow. Uh, Tim, you want to come take it from here? No, you go right there. <laughs> I love this guy. This is my guy. I, you know, wow, 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 wow. Let me say that backwards. Wow, 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 wow. You know what I'm so elated and enamored about? I've been teaching on all these various topics and titles. And in every last one of them, it's been my endeavor mm, it's been my endeavor to convey the original intent of God. That's been my endeavor the entire time. Pull that back for me, Q, please. The entire time, throughout every subject matter, vision, faith, family, finance, fellowship, let's get to the original intent. So it was God's intent for a man and a woman to come together and have had no previous or prior physical contact sexually with one, come on, y'all not going to pray with me here. I'm talking about two virgins coming together. We're, we're not trying to put down your story. We're trying to highlight their story as it relates to the original intent of God. And so here's my desire and heart's cry passion that there's some young girls and young boys who would take on the order of God at this particular time and use this as a model. What has God asked us to do in this moment? He asked us to be the models. And you mean to tell me we can't take the time out to highlight. I, I couldn't have this testimony because of Dee Dee. You knew that was coming. Well, as long as you knew it was coming. No, but listen to me. Even with our own lives, we blew it before the time, of course, of marriage. Not her and I, because at that particular time, we got saved. And the girl literally kept it locked till she got her rock. No, I'm trying to help y'all with something here. It's just to exalt the order of God because there are some young teenage boys and there are some young teenage girls that are being inundated. They are being overwhelmed by all of what's happening in our society that's exposing them to something that's diametrically opposed to the order of God. 
and sadly to report there are more Christian young girls and Christian young boys who are abandoning the original intent of God. Can I get a little help from at least y'all? I mean, I mean, I, it's, it's kind of challenging because when you talk about this, there is a conviction and to some degree a condemnation that the devil would try to use on you because you've blown that moment. It's okay if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. It's okay. But when can we exalt God's original intent? And if y'all wasn't going to say anything, you could have stayed home. Can I get any amens from this? They come together. They wed holy matrimony. And then they give birth to mm, what God intends for a family to come together and to be like. Now they can use their testimonies. They can use their testimonies to share with their children. This is what God intended. Now we turn this thing back to Eden. Yes, we turn it back to Eden. I said, we turn it back to eat. And if every man and every woman in your household, the word Mary comes from the understanding and the Greek definition of connection. So when these two families got together, it was specifically designed for the head of this family and the head of this family to come together as well. We now partner, oh man, of like-mindedness. This is what you are witnessing today, right before your very eyes is the order of God. Because the fellowship now is established as it relates to the original intent of God that men and women will serve under the same order of God and like-mindedness with regards to the original intent. So here we stand today, demonstrating, and it's very rare. That's why I want to take advantage of it. Not to say, oh, look at us, look at God. Amen. Oh, Jesus, Amen. look at God. And it's amazing that the relationship that I have with his father and his mother, you would have thought that we were related through blood. You would think because, I mean, the connection. Even though they refused to stay at my house. <laughs> we move on in fellowship and in godliness. I can't, I can't take it. I can't take uh, Bubba. I can't take Cresswell. Look at him. Weighing in at 250, no. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. Hi, G. Hi, baby. No, you had your day, sweetie. It's, it's, huh? What's so astonishing, they are both one right now, right? Nasty thing, you <laughs> just nasty. You nasty no, too. Nasty. Now you nasty. <laughs> hey man, his birthday was yesterday and we celebrated him on yesterday and we wanted to make this his weekend. Oh great, pull that stool up. Push it up, yeah. Cause, okay, stand up babe. Okay, okay, you wanna sit? Okay. All right. Q, you all right holding her? And she's next. We got another one coming to present them. Father, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you so much 
for this awesome man of God. <laughs> Thank you so much for this awesome man of God. This man of God who has the privilege of being raised in a home with Pastor Tim and Pastor Breland. And we pray that every spiritual, physical, and <laughs> glory to God, every need be met, that he is this earth's answer, that he will represent you all the days of his precious life, that he will be raised in the fear and admonition of God's word. Thank you for the principle-driven home that's been established for him to dwell in. Thank you that he'll have the admonishment of Holy Spirit to lead and guide him into all truth. We pray over his health. Yes. Glory to God. We pray over his wealth. We pray over his education. He will excel academically in every area. No illegal substance will ever enter into his body. I thank you, Father, that he'll keep his virginity until he's married. <laughs> Dee, is there anything you want to add in that prayer? Tim, Wanda, you all want to add anything in the prayer? In the name of Jesus, we even pray for his mate, his wife. Glory to God that she's spirit-filled, that she loves God equally. And we decree and declare that he'll want for nothing all the days of his life. In Jesus' name, lift him to the Lord. So, Father, we lift him now up unto you and present him and dedicate him unto you in Jesus' name. Come on, let all the family, friends, well wishes shout amen. how to cut off when it's time to cut off. You know, there's an anointing to start and then there's an anointing to stop. Yeah. Uh, am I supposed to say something or you? Yes, on behalf of the Baby Dedication Auxiliary as well as the Spirit of Faith family, we present these gifts onto the Bowmans on this morning. Amazing. So here you guys are, uh, gifts. Yeah, yeah, you like that? Wow, okay, uh, can you help them get them down and, mm -hmm. uh, to wherever they have to go? Well, you are na -na -na -na. It's been, it's been, it's been so long that I've done something like that. Yeah, it's, it really has. And so, yeah, bring that down, guys. Okay, hey, watch over here. Yeah, it's, I've been talking. Do they have a monitor over there? Can they hear me? Yeah, uh, it's been so long that I've done something like that. I mean, I was just kind of, wow. Okay, what do we do next? Um, 
how do I handle this from this point? Um, let me address one thing. I uh, received the uh, vaccination on this week. Dee uh, Dee had been on me and even all of the medical professionals in this ministry, my, my doctor, da, 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 based upon some history, of course, that you all are well aware of. Uh, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with respect to that, uh, posture and approach. I literally inquired of the Lord and with or like with everything else I do, I wait until I sense peace concerning what it is I'm supposed to do. You know, you can see others doing, and my whole household was vaccinated. Um, and I mean, my, my, my wife, uh, daughters, uh, you know, that kind of thing, in-laws. But there, there was not any peace germane to, to myself. So like everyone else, I safeguarded myself. But then the Spirit of God began to speak to me about what I needed to do and even why I needed to do it. Uh, the number one thing I heard is, why give the devil even more opportunity or uh, ammunition to come at your health when they have provided something that would literally help ward off the devastating impact or effect? Now, now this, this has to be a personal decision and I never thought I would get into this and, and maybe some need to hear it because of my example in leadership some people were well, well aware of the fact that I have not been vaccinated and they watch and sit back to see what I do in many instances I, I wanted to make it public knowledge to you that I have I received one Pfizer shot on Tuesday? Didi wasn't even aware of that. I just I, I went to go get my car washed. I, I, I set the thing up and walked into a place, and we have people who can do that here and so many other opportunities. I just walked into a place and sat down. And when I came home, I told them I got three things I wanted to do today done. And I said I got my car washed. What was the other thing? I, I don't remember. But then I said, I went to go get my shot. She said, no, you didn't. And I whipped out my car. And she looked at it. She examined it carefully. Huh? She made sure it wasn't fake. And when I tell you her response so affected me because... The elation that she expressed, first of all, she hugged me, and then tears began. I mean, it was like, thank you, Lord. You know, I'm like, come on, baby, it's not all that. Because I knew, listen to me, you got to be in faith if you have this shot or if you don't have this shot. You, you better, just because you got a shot doesn't mean, okay, all right. So either way, you, gotta be, you, you must stay in faith. But to see her and the elation that she expressed, it was well worth, because, and I knew it was God. And so I'm not concerned about any kind of devastating side effects because I got the peace. I got the peace of God. That's all I was waiting on. I needed the peace of God concerning what God wanted me to do. Maybe he wanted to demonstrate something. I don't know. I know how to follow God. But I'm telling you all publicly.
that this thing was established simply because I got the peace of God. And if my testimony could assist you in sensing the peace of God, because things are getting back. And I think it's by design that they are forcing all of us who have not had a shot. You know, they're letting everybody out and they're coming together. And I would be one of those that would be considered as it relates to shots, unprotected. But I'm never unprotected. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But there are certain kind of, you know, things that you can make yourself, you know, exposed to when you don't have to. And so that was the ration and the reason that, uh, that the Spirit of God spoke to me about. Enough of that. Let, let, me, let me just wrap this up, conclude, because they just showed me a 10-minute sign. And I, I, I think I can do uh, that within this time. And I'm very pleased with how this day was spent. <clears throat> if you didn't get anything out of it, join me uh, next week. <laughs> It'll go much better next week if you were not satisfied. I'm content with it. I made this statement, and as I referred back to my notes, I made this statement that God is restoring a kingdom's mentality by Holy Spirit back into the hearts and minds of his people. He's restoring a kingdom mentality. I said the kingdom mentality represents the kingdom of God. Wendy Treat was here a few weeks ago and she was just expounding on how she had becoming, she had become more kingdom minded like never before. And it just confirmed, it registered to me the very fact that he is moving by Holy Spirit throughout the world concerning this kingdom's mentality. Now, the kingdom mentality is birthed out of, of course, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is simply God's way of doing things. It is a government. It's the order of God. The kingdom of God represents the order of God, and the order of God represents the design and the desire of God. Wherever there is a desire of God, there's a design. That's that kingdom's mentality. There are guidelines that governs the minds of those who are the blood-washed, blood-bought children of the Most High God. Does that make sense to anybody? There are guidelines. What did I just say? There are guidelines that govern the mindset of those of us who have given our lives to him as Savior, but more importantly, as Lord. He said, why call me Lord and you don't think like this? So this mindset, as it relates to the kingdom of God that he's restoring, is now injecting inside of the body of Christ the understanding of fellowship. Fellowship has to become more endearing to you as it relates to the mindset of God. He's not just talking about getting together, breaking of bread. How are you doing? What's going on? No, those things are essential and those things are significant. Those things are relevant. But more importantly, how's your faith? How have you been standing? What have you been focusing in on as it relates to his preordained assignment for your life? You were created with purpose in mind. So as we come together in this corporate understanding of fellowship, you've been called into it. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter number one, verse nine. We've been called into. So when Jesus went to God Gotha's hill, when he went to Calvary, there were a lot of things that were paid for, but specifically, fellowship is what you and I were made for. We were made for fellowship. And to put yourself off, and I hear it all the time, there are Christians who separate themselves from the body to say, I was going through some things and I just needed to break away and get away from everybody so I could get myself together. That is not the guidelines of the kingdom. 
The Bible says you come together and you confess your faults or infirmities or inadequacies or inconsistencies. You confess those things one to another so that you may be healed. The Bible says two is better than one. For when one falls, you will have the other there. I'm preaching better than they... Are you here? So God is faithful. First Corinthians chapter number one, verse number nine. God is faithful by whom you were called. You were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So now as it relates to your calling, this is a calling. There's a specific way of thinking as it relates to your brother and your sister. How dare you demise the order of God by having problems and perpetual situations with one another and dismiss each other, not considering the order of God first. When you come together, Pray ye one for another. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And some of your fellowships don't even involve prayer and the reading of the word and the concern of the saints. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? <clears throat> I understand that some things change in life as it relates to what God has spoken to us. And there are different methodologies that we must use and different approaches as it relates to that. But the message of the kingdom of God never changes. The message, even, even with respect to what we've had over the years. Some of you recall this platform that I'm standing on being full of marble. Now it's plyboard. Okay, but guess what? The message mm, has remained the same. The marble and the wood has changed. The lights, the smoke, the mirrors. This is all Pastor Tim's fault. But what happened? The engagement of fellowship because of what his generation would look to to need as it relates to the attraction of the order of God and his guidelines. We just experienced a man and a woman who stood before you. Although he's culturally embraced and in tune, the standard of God remains. Y'all gonna just make me stand here all by myself. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? And so it's been specifically designed or set up for this fellowship, like-mindedness, and I've challenged people of late. One situation I was really kind of astonished by because I was looking for forgiveness to come out of the mind and the mouth of the person that I was engaged. And we stand here and we preach about this love and this grace and this forgiveness. And when I encountered or inquired about this love, forgiveness, and grace, it was amazing to me because one of, our, one of our texts or platform scriptures we use was John 13, 34. A new commandment that I give unto you, uh -huh. that you love one another as I have loved you. Yes, as I have loved you. Yes. As I have loved you. And then we're so quick to say, as he is. But when it comes to as I have loved you, uh -huh. we go with personal preferences in how we feel over then the principle or the guidelines of the kingdom of God. In fellowship, you're going to have to remain kingdom minded. Greater is he that's in you. Let's, let's see it. Uh -huh. Let's not just talk about it. And sometimes I know it's easier said than done, but if you keep doing it, it will be done easier. I got to get out of here. My time is up. I'm out of minutes, but I'm certainly not out of message. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I thought that, I thought some churchy stuff would help. If you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord, if you don't know him, 
and the pardon of your sins. If you have never received him as Savior, it's time to do so. Receive Jesus Christ. I promise you, your life will never ever be the same. That's if you are complicit, if you comply with the order of God. You can receive Jesus and your life never change as it relates to the seen arena. But in the unseen arena, you are his, you are his child. But in this fellowship with him, Paul said that I may know him in the partaking and the fellowship of his sufferings. And so there are some things that if you come to know about your part in his suffering, your life will never be the same. You're not filled with Holy Spirit. Pastor Tim said this early. What a great day to be filled with Holy Spirit. What a great day. The, to, the day we celebrate Pentecost, great day to be filled with Holy Spirit. And if you're without a pastor, I would certainly love to be your pastor. All across this globe, we've taken in past, uh, partners from Africa and from China and Australia, Australia and Switzerland, people all over this world because this pandemic has shown us something about how we can expand who we are and how we do things. I got to go now. Nightcap is going to be exciting. You don't want to miss it. All right. Remember these words found in 2 Corinthians. Big shout out to Faith City Music. I just heard that. You guys are doing a great job. Remember these words found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 7. For we walk by, are you ready to go, CJ? For we, I want to hear it before I go. For we walk, I want to hear it right now, CJ. For we walk by faith. Huh? Did I say PJ? What did I say? Remember these words found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. No doubt about it. We'll see you. Young the King is here. Uh, yeah. Hey. All hail the King. Let's have. <laughs> Yo, I'm feeling like this. Yeah. I'm willing to his courts with praise. Yo! I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Praise the 